Hi guys, I'm Eric James from Rogan Tribe, and thank you for coming to this channel. This channel is all about bringing you nuggets of gold from Joe Rogan, Joe, Joe Rogan Podcast, and uh, I hope you like this video. Joe Rogan has never been shy about his support for the military. And on his JRE podcast, he's had a whole ton of guys from the Army Rangers to Marines and, yes, Navy SEALs. And in this video, I'm going to highlight seven Navy SEALs that he's had on his podcast that you probably didn't even know about. When things are going bad, don't get all bummed out, don't get startled, don't get frustrated. If you can say the word good. Jocko Willenick, perhaps the most famous Navy SEAL in the world today. This guy has been on the JRE podcast quite a few times, and those episodes have been absolutely fantastic. And he loves podcasting so much that he even created his own podcast, the Jocko Podcast. Definitely worth checking out. In episode 1492 on JRE, he appeared with Tulsi Gabbard while she was running for president. And that's a good episode. They talked about current political affairs. Jocko is an unbreakable man. And in my opinion, the number one guy you would want watching your six if you're going into battle. Now, like Rogan, Jocko is really big into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he's a frequent practitioner of it. And he even incorporated this training into Navy SEALs when he was a Navy SEAL commander. Now, a fun fact about Jocko, he actually worked at Wendy's after high school before joining the SEALs. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things, because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. David Goggins has been on the JRE podcast a couple times. And he's nicknamed the baddest man on the planet for good reason. Now, just listening to Goggins speak will fire you up. In fact, part of his duties in the SEALs was to travel around the country, inspiring young students to join the SEALs. And he's a complete beast in the gym. He set the pull-up record for the most pull-ups in 24 hours, 4,030 pull-ups. And when he was training to become a SEAL way back in the day, he had to drop 100 pounds in just a few months, and he did it. And now he's an ultra marathon runner, running incredibly long races like the Moab 240, a 240 mile race up and down mountains, brutal race, and he always places really high in those. Now, although his pull up record of 4,030 was actually broken right after by Cam Haynes' son, Justin Truitt, and Cam Haynes is the big buddy of David Goggins and Joe Rogans. Goggins is the only man to become a Navy SEAL, an Army Ranger, and graduate from the Air Force Tactical Air Control Training School. So who do you guys think is the baddest man on the planet? Leave a comment in the comment section. Andy Stumpf, known globally as a leadership and motivational expert, is a former Navy SEAL and JRE guest multiple times. As many things are in my old job, there is a aspect of learning and there is an aspect of tough it out and you combine the two. So it, it sucked. And there was, there was a reason f that they wanted it to suck, but they were also trying to teach a lesson. Right. And Stump, after 10 years of working as an active duty Navy SEAL, returned to the home base to become a basic underwater demolition SEAL trainer, but trainer. Now, as an instructor, he actually one time it was a really cool video on YouTube about Stump training the U.S. men's water polo team. And these guys show up and they're like, oh yeah, we got this. And then he rips their ass a new one. And it was a really funny video, but also uh, you can learn a lot from it. Now, Stump has set a few sky jumping records where he went up and he basically skydived from nearly outer space and flew for over 18 miles in a wingsuit. Dan Crenshaw is a former Navy SEAL and politician, the kind of politician that Joe Rogan said he would definitely vote for. People will tell a story of victimhood and be cheered, but we're not supposed to cheer for that. We might feel compassion for them, but to cheer for them? 
And this and this explains why we're seeing these sort of hoaxes that we've seen. Like, why did Jesse Smollett feel that he had to say that two MAGA guys in Chicago beat him up? Like, why did what was when Crenshaw is a Republican in the United States House representing part of the Houston, Texas area, which interestingly, you know, Rogan just recently moved to Austin, Texas. You know, there's possibilities that maybe Crenshaw runs for governor of Texas at some point. And so maybe Rogan will get his chance for a vote for Crenshaw in the future. Now, Crenshaw lost his right eye in the Afghanistan war to a improvised explosive device, IED. And now he wears a pirate looking patch on his right eye. I said, if he's not going to admit it didn't happen face to face, one on one, and I challenge his courage. Because, yeah, he had the courage to go to Iraq. He had the courage to shoot all these people, but he didn't have the courage to tell the truth, did he? What a bizarre moment that must have been sitting across from that. Similar to Joe Rogan, Jesse Ventura has been extremely successful in multiple different categories. So much so that, in fact, most people forget that he is, in fact, a former Navy SEAL. Ventura's list of accomplishments is long. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2004, he became the governor of Minnesota, and he was a star actor in movies like Predator, Batman and Robin, and The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, Ventura has been outspoken about the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, saying that they were done for the wrong motives and too many unnecessary lives were lost. And on JRE episode 858, he talked with Rogan about his lawsuit with Chris Kyle, the American sniper defamation suit. And I'm wondering why are why is the United States standing by and letting this happen, even though I'm six years old at the time? Um, I'm like, why is this happening? Why don't we go in there and get those guys? And then Desert One happens. Um, and of course, that's that's on the mind. It's still shades. Everything we do is a special uh, in special operations. There's a big black eye for the country. Jack Carr was on the JRE podcast in episode 1464. And on the podcast, he talked with Rogan about his journey from Navy SEAL to now a best-selling author writing fiction books. His books are about military, war, heroes, and his books are True Believer, The Terminal List, and Savage Son. And he plans to keep writing more. And in May of 2020, uh, on Joe Rogan's Instagram, he posted about the books he was reading by Jack Carr. And he w basically went on a binge reading three of them in just one month. And Trevor Thompson appeared on the JRE podcast in episode 1434. Now this guy is very talented. He's like a Swiss army knife. What, what made you feel like you were making a difference? The things I know that we got to participate in, the places we were, and the guys that we removed from the battle space, captured or killed, were fucking shitheads. And on the SEALs, he worked on the SEAL delivery vehicle team, where he got to do all this really cool stuff, like ride torpedo-looking underwater vehicles. I don't know, they talked about it on the podcast. And on his website, he indicates that he's an instructor for stunts, skydiving type stuff. And another one of his passions is being a public speaker in front of large groups of people. Mm -hmm.